Hey everyone, Eddie Wilson here with the Think Realty Video Podcast. I'm stepping in for Avi Golhar. Avi's usually the host here, uh, but under these conditions, uh, I'm the only one that could make it into the studio, and I this is one of my favorite things I get to do, is come to you live and uh, talk to you about the marketplace and bring you some great guests. Uh, today, uh, we have an exceptional guest that I've had uh, the privilege of knowing for many years now, and he's someone that's leading the industry in a very specific category, and he is called on by many people around the world to speak towards this topic. So before we get into uh, meeting him, let me just give a quick thank you to our sponsor. Our podcast is brought to you by Aaron B. Chapman, AaronBChapman.com. Uh, that you can bypass all the overcomplications of the common suit and tie mortgage guy. His team of real estate investment finance experts at Security National Mortgage will help you. No fluff, no complicated industry speak, just brutally honest, and he will uh, give you as much information as you need. You can go there to Aaron bchapman.com for more information. Aaron has helped me with a lot of my uh, conventional loans, and I'm sure he'll be able to help you out as well. So thank him by going and visiting his website for sponsoring this podcast. Today's guest is Bruce McNeilich, and Bruce I've known for a very long time. I've sat on stages with him at IMN and various other places. We've also had him on the cover of Think Realty Magazine and various other things inside of the magazine. And so I'm excited that he's joining us today. Bruce, are you with us? Yes, Eddie. Thank you so much. Yeah, glad you're with us. So, you know, obviously this is crazy circumstances we're in today. Uh, we're under um, a quarantine in the state of Georgia and you are in the state of Tennessee, correct? Yes. Very good. And so are you quarantined in Tennessee or what's what's the environment like there? I've been quarantined in Tennessee, but I'm going to be uh, quarantined in Sarasota, Florida for a few weeks. Oh, that's good. Thursday. <laughs> that's good. Well, you know, I want you to talk to us today about your viewpoint on the state of the market. Um, you are one of the leaders in the build to rent category. Um, and you have built hundreds of homes, both in Georgia and Tennessee, and I believe in South Carolina, and, um, and have you know, really helped those that are trying to generate wealth uh, by getting into this category of building new homes that uh, are suitable for rental properties, cash flowing rental properties. So if you don't mind, take two you know, minutes and explain to us the build to rent model, and then I'd love to hear you know, how you think that ultimately will tie into our current circumstances that we're in today? Sure. So um, what's going on in the market, I think, is causing some influx. I think it's going to help investors, people like me and other small investors. I think it's going to also hurt because money is be uh, beginning to be tougher to get. Some of the banks that we were working with have pulled back. But quite frankly, we're seeing other banks uh, come to us because they may be loaning money on hotels, on shopping centers, uh, uh, light industrial, and also office. And going forward, obviously, those things are not going to be doing uh, as well or not doing uh, well today and will be affected in the future. Where SFR, you know, we don't have any problems with, with uh, vacancy this month. I think we've, we've uh, missed three tenants that have only paid us uh, a portion of the rent. And that goes to the quality of our tenant and, and things like that. But I don't see it hurting SFR at all. And I don't see it hurting prospects at all. The number of people that are coming to look at houses uh, whatsoever. That's awesome. So, you know, you are uh, right now managing how many properties, you know, you said you only had a few, how many properties would that be? Because I know you sell a lot of properties to others yeah. as well. Yes. So right before this happened, we had two liquidity events. So okay. we uh, cut back, it's probably just been a month or two ago, we, we actually got lucky because we sold those at a good time. And I'm currently building 34 houses and we just finished the last house. So I've got some vacant uh, vacancy there as we're leasing up, but I'm just under 200 that we own today. And I would say it's split between Nashville and South Carolina. And then Atlanta, where I was very busy the last seven years has tapered off. Uh, and we have a small amount of houses in Raleigh, but we're really trying to focus for the most part on South Carolina and also in the greater Nashville area. That's awesome. 
So, you know, a lot of real estate investors, um, some are feeling the push uh, of, of the marketplace today. Uh, they're worried about their financing. They're worried about their deals. Um, what are your thoughts? I mean, where do you see this going? Obviously, this is uh, something that none of us expected. I mean, maybe we expected a downturn in the marketplace, but this virus and the shutting down of the economy, um, what's your take on the economy and where the SFR industry is going or what, you know, I, I know it's hard to predict anything, but, you know, wh what are your thoughts? Well, a few things. I think getting the money is the most important part. If there's deals out there in the market and there's opportunities to buy houses at a discount, materials going down, labor going down, if you want to do rehab or build a house, it, there's going to be a wonderful opportunity for that. The problem is if you don't have the money and you can't get the uh, lending capacity from these banks or these banks are pulling back, that's going to really create a problem. And so what we always like to do is we always like to have five or six banks that we have loans with just in case one or two pull back. We want to make sure there's a few other banks that work with us that give us enough capacity. So if there are pullbacks, if we get deals on houses that we can take advantage of that right now, I think the thing for the next month, two, three months, and even going into the future is builders that have been building specs, whether they're national, regional, or local builders, we're getting calls every day. Will you take 10 of my specs? Hey, I've got 20 houses being finished. Do you have an interest in buying them? And we're looking right now at somewhere between 10 and 15% discounts. We feel it'll go up probably closer to 20% in the next two or three months <coughs> as, as they are finishing the houses that they've already started. And so a lot of the newer inventory that's coming on the market, um, you're getting a chance to look at uh, for highly discounted rates. That's great. You know, yeah. that's one thing that I've said a, a lot. You know, obviously I have Think Realty, but I also have the American Association of Private Lenders. And um, a lot of these lenders that are tied to the capital markets today uh, are, are really shut down. I mean, like they, they have slowed way down. Um, and then you have some that have some discretionary lending funds that are still highly active and aggressive. Um, you know, one thing that I've suggested to a lot of the, the guys that I speak to, just like yourself, is like, you know, maybe it's time for a bridge loan, it, you know, some of these guys that have discretionary funds to get you through this time period so that when the conventional markets open back up, you can continue to do deals. Um, so you've got, you know, this, this you know, it's, it's a newer category. I mean, I would think that you would say it's a newer category. I didn't start hearing people talk about build to rent and still, until you started talking about it at IMN, you know, probably five or six years ago. That was the first time I had heard the term. And, sure. um, and so have you seen a lot of other people coming in and, and actually looking at the numbers and building properties for rentals versus just rehabbing properties and putting them in their portfolio? So I started Build to Rent in 2005 in wow. Spring Hill, Tennessee. We started doing brand new houses. The only thing I did is brand new houses. And then we started getting all around the city, Hendersonville, Tennessee, Mount Juliet, Tennessee. And I, I guess I got lucky to a certain point. I had the vision that this was something that would be of interest, would be um, quite frankly popular. And I was the only one doing it. I mean, where could you rent brand new houses in communities throughout the Southeast. Now it's all in vogue, everybody's talking about it. And one of the reasons they're talking about it is all the low hanging fruit is gone, the courthouse steps, the short sales. So anybody with money, these large corporations are having to, ma uh, having to manufacture the houses themselves. Many of them have tried to do it. It hasn't worked out that well for them. And they've gone to best in breed, people like us in our markets and said, hey, we want to buy your 50 brand new houses, or do you have any houses coming up that we can buy? And we've really capitalized on that. We're getting a premium for houses. Many times we're delivering the houses with the tenants already in them. So usually it's 95 to 100% occupied. So it's turnkey for those uh, companies that have money. And as long as it meets their numbers, and as long as the box turns green, and we're in the MSAs that they want to be in, it certainly uh, proved very valuable for us. Now, the problem is the minute I sell those assets, I've go out, I have to go out and redeploy that money. And that's the thing that's becoming harder and harder to do. So we're selling much, much less and we're keeping 
uh, our assets and then going to long-term cash flow them. But right now, all the majors have turned off the spigot as far as buying new assets. So for us, the only thing we can do is keep them ourselves. The good news is we were keeping themselves anyway. And so I started doing this in Tennessee in 2005, ramped it up uh, here four or five years ago. And now I think it's probably the, the, the hottest, highest growing uh, part of the SFR business, but also uh, the, the build to, uh, not the build to rent, but the home building business, the home investing business. And I'm just happy I started it uh, way back when I have become someone that speaks nationally on it. And I enjoy doing that. And quite frankly, to a certain degree, my model hasn't changed. Yeah. You know, the nice thing about um, that model that you're talking about is if the market does take a dip and values do decrease, um, it doesn't really affect a cash flowing property, you know, and, and is that kind of what you're banking on? I mean, you you look at this and, you know, who knows, does the market dip? Do, do our values go down and then back up again? I mean, I've heard so many pundits talk about what this could do to the retail market. Um, you know, so is this how you become recession proof is through a cash flow portfolio like this? Well, what's nice about our business is if you can't sell the assets for what you think at a certain time that you were trying to determine, you might want to get out of the assets, you can keep them. And the reason why you can keep them is their cash flow. Sure. And the longer someone stays in the asset, the longer you keep it for, all they're doing is they're paying off your mortgage for you. So if you think about it, people wait in line. We get four, five, six people applying for a house. And I've told my partner and I've told my wife, those people are really coming into our lives, filling out applications to pay off our mortgages. Mm -hmm. What a great business to be in. But if I'm wrong and I can't get out of something in a year or two or three years, I'm in a great position because I just keep it rented. I'm able to bump rents up two, three, four percent every year. And that's usually accretive to my bottom line because taxes, insurance, uh, my payments that are fixed have not gone uh, up. And so the longer someone stays, the longer we keep the asset, not only are we doing better on cash flow, but again, those people are paying down our mortgage. I don't know if you call this recession proof, but everybody has to live in a house they're not going to trade up in times like this to a fancy house or an expensive house. But what's nice is we're in the entry level or one step above entry level uh, market, two hundred to three hundred thousand dollar houses, and everybody's got to live in one. And and what's great about our business, you either have to rent or you have to buy. We do both. Uh, our goal is to rent you a house. And right now, and I think this is very important for people listening to this. Our average tenant in a brand new house stays six years. The average in the SFR business is about two and a half years. Sure. So think about it. No turns, a lot less turns. We don't have to advertise. The house doesn't stay vacant for a month or two. We don't have to pay commissions. And that really helps us be more successful than most just because we don't have the turnover and we have high quality tenants that stay in our houses that are rented and uh, don't leave. And if you think about it, why would you leave a brand new house in 12 months or 24 months? Sure. You can't do any, you can't do any better than brand new. Yeah, that's awesome. So a lot of our viewers, um, obviously their businesses are changing. Um, they are looking at their model. Um, I've had phone calls from the past few days of people just excited about the opportunity to come and terrified, you know, and it's like they're, they're one way or the other. They're, they're trying to keep their businesses together and solvent or they are just like pumped and have cash stored away and are ready to go. Um, and a lot of them are going to look at what you're saying right now and go, this might be a model for me. So do you mind sharing a little bit of the, the secret sauce? You know, like, what do the numbers have to look like if I'm buying a piece sure. of vacant land or an infill lot? You know, like, how do you gauge whether this is a good opportunity for you or not? Well, right now, you don't have to do brand new houses. And you, you can get into houses and rehab them pretty quick and also possibly more profitable because the house is probably going to be a lower priced house. And you can turn that house pretty quickly versus waiting for a new house to be built uh, 90, 120 days. And remember, you need to get that land padded out. It has to be developed. And that takes roughly a year to get entitlements and to pad out uh, property before you can build a house on them. And so right now, if I was a smaller investor, 
I would look for houses. The value of those houses are, are they're going to be going down in the future. Banks will start owning those houses in the future. I'm seeing articles where landlords are asking for relief from the government because their vacancy is starting to, uh, to go up. And in my opinion, you can't give a landlord uh, uh, public uh, assistance because they're an entrepreneur. That's the business they're in. But also, let me say, materials and labor, the prices are going to start going down as framers, as roofers lose some of their business, get slower because the national or local builder is cutting back. That's going to create opportunities for people like me or, or people like me that a few years ago or people that I'm talking to, smaller investors, you now are getting drywall. You're now are getting framing. You're now getting guys that are doing flooring. Not only the products that you're paying for, but the people actually doing the work. So that's gonna help you with your cash flow. We're in a low interest rate environment. If you can get a loan, that's what you wanna try to do, again, to make your business more profitable. Bridge lending is fantastic. If you borrow, you're at a higher interest rate, but it gives you an opportunity to renovate something or buy something, get it tenanted, and then it's much easier to go back to a bank and borrow the money. And at a bank, just remember, you're doing a refinance. So you're able to capitalize on your hard-earned, kind of what I call sweat equity, because they don't look at what you paid for it and what you have in it. They look at what it's worth. So many times you can borrow 90, 95% uh, of, of the new value, the new uh, uh, appraised value to your second lender, your long-term lender. And so it allows you to take capital away and take capital out of that asset. And it allows you to put it in the next asset. So for us, materials going down, uh, labor uh, shortages now become labor, uh, um, I guess, overages or, or labor looking for work. And of course, that's going to bring um, that's going to bring the price of rehabbing down. It's also going to bring the price of houses that you can buy from builders uh, down. And, and of course, that's that's great for people in our business. Yeah, Bruce, obviously, the people that are watching uh, are real estate investors and real estate investors by nature are opportunistic. And we need sure. to be probably careful and cognizant of the people that are going through a diff difficult time you know, eight, nine million people losing their jobs, maybe 20 million people losing their jobs, depending on how long this situation lasts. And in the, the last recession, 13% of them lost their homes when they lost their jobs. Um, that's a large number. Um, but let me ask you this. I mean, knowing that, that it's a sensitive situation, but the reason we're real estate investors is because we, we believe in this asset class. In the next six months, year, 18 months, um, do you think that this is going to be the greatest opportunity uh, in our lifetime for real estate investment and wealth generation? What's your take on that? A lot of people are saying that in the next 18 months, this could be the greatest opportunity. Maybe someone didn't get into it in 07, 08, 09. They missed the opportunity. Now they've been kind of watching, buying small, uh, building up. Um, take on the next 18 months? This is going to be the second greatest opportunity. The greatest opportunity was 08, 09, 10, 11. We were going very hard renovating uh, new houses, one, two, three-year-old houses in Atlanta that we bought from banks. Interest rates are low. Prices are coming down. Money is getting cheaper. This is the greatest economic time, in my opinion, to buy rental properties that someone will ever see. I don't care if you're 40, 50, 30, today's the day. Because cap rates are gonna change. When assets become more expensive and rents basically stay the same, you wanna buy houses at cheaper and cheaper prices, you're gonna get better cash flows, 10, 11, 12% gross. If they're at six or seven or eight, you better be borrowing at three or 4% for that to make sense. If you're borrowing at six or seven, you better have a 10 or 11 or 12% cap rate to make money. But yes, the next three, four, five months, I think you're really going to hit the ground and you're going to see a lot of fear and banks getting uh, nervous, pulling back on not only lending, but having spec houses on the ground. And builders are going to have to discount those houses. I think we're also going to see REO activity pick up. I think there's going to be deals out there 
And it's the people with cash, the people that are knowing what they're doing, the people that understand the MSAs, the zip codes, where they are, those people are going to make an awful lot of money. And remember, if people lose their houses, they have to rent a house. If people get transferred in a town and they haven't sold their house up north, they have to rent a house. The worse the times get in our economy, the better it off, uh, better off we're going to be as investors. And I want everybody to hear this. I think this is probably the best thing you can take away. The death of the American dream has been happening right before us for 60 years, for six decades. The days of working for a Fortune 500 company, retiring, getting a gold watch, you have some money in a pension plan, and you move to Florida, and you're doing fine. They're over, they're dead, it's never to be seen again. Many people are just resigned to be renters for the rest of their lives. People are graduating, graduating from college with 50, 100, $200,000 worth of debt. They might not be able to get out of that till they're 35 or 40. So we have a very, very large pool of people in which to draw. We will have a larger and larger pool going forward. It'll be easier to rent higher rates what you've got to do as a small investor right now is you have to shore up your capital commitments. You also have to have cash because the, the uh, LOIs, not the LOIs, the, you, want to, you want to have LOIs signed, but what you have to put down, whether it's 60, 70, 80 percent, you want to deal with lenders that are putting, uh, allowing you to put as little down, whether it be LTV or LTC, but for a lot of banks, a lot of lenders, they're going to want to come down to the 60 or 70 percent. That makes it tougher on small investors because maybe you can only buy one house at a time. Keep your cash. Maybe you can refinance the, ha the houses you already own. And think about that. Take the equity from those houses, harvest that, and then go out and buy new houses. That's really the way I got to be a small investor. I bought one house and then two and three and four. And next thing you know, people were bringing me deals. I actually found out how the business work, uh, worked and made some mistakes. But right now is the time. Start talking to people, looking for deals, introducing yourself to bankers saying, when you take back houses, call me. You don't need to pay commissions. I'll be there. I have the financing. And many times the bank that takes back the asset will be the one willing to lend you the money to buy the asset. And that's a big deal. So I would start working on that now because you're really going to start seeing that two, three, four months from now. That's awesome. Great advice from an expert, Bruce. I know that I've looked to your advice for many of my projects. I know we even flew you out to Kansas City uh, to, to spend a day or two with us just to look at one. And, you know, the thing that I appreciated about you most was you said, this is a bad deal. You know, don't, don't do it. The numbers don't work, you know? So I appreciate that about you. Eddie, you flew me out for 24 hours. All I wanted to go out is get good barbecue and maybe have a few drinks. <laughs> my, my whole, uh, I, I, if you were expecting a formal written, uh, report, my report was four words. And then I was asked again by your employee and I gave him the four more words again. <laughs> I think he might ask me, are you sure? And I'm like, brother, if I have to tell you again, we're in trouble, but you flew me out there and my entire proposal was four words. What were the four words? Well, one had an F bomb in it. The <laughs> other one is, I think it was, are you effing kidding me? I think that's four. <laughs> Are you really doing this? Yeah. What are you, an idiot? It, <laughs> those were all of them. So maybe I said 12 words, but each four each of those meant four? the same. Yeah. I, I had, though, to get more aggressive in my answers <laughs> because at first I sugarcoated it. He didn't get it. Then I sugarcoated it a little bit less. And finally, after the third term, I'm like, third time, I'm like, brother, if you don't understand what I'm saying, you've got problems. So you gave four words, and one of those four words was it was a four letter word, just to yeah. just to emphasize the point. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. appreciate I, again, that. That's that's if what I like you about you. Formal written report. I'm not the guy. I had boots on the ground. Right. I looked for things. I talked to people, waiters, waitresses cops. The guy that delivers the mail knows which neighborhoods are bad and which aren't. 
I talk to everybody. Now, can you do data and statistical analyst analyzation? Sure. But at the end of the day, I want to be on Main Street. I don't want to be on Wall Street because you can't make decisions from an ivory tower wearing Gucci shoes, not hitting the street. Sure. And so you've got to pound the street, talk to people. That's where you're going to make money and that's where you're going to get good deals. Yeah. And, uh, and I know that you will give great advice to those that reach out to you and um, have huh. always been a help to us. How can people uh, reach out to you? What's the best way to connect? I know you're really active on LinkedIn and social right. media. Um, what's the best way for them to reach out, contact you, and follow along? I think the best uh, way to is go to my website. It's kinlockpartners.net, K-I-N-L-O-C-H partners.net. And my email address is just bruce at kinlockpartners.net. You can send me an email. I can give you a short answer, maybe four, five, six uh, words. But also, I can give you a longer answer. I can tell you about how I've made mistakes, how I haven't. And I think the best tuition for me has always been learn from other people's mistakes sure. and not make them my own. And as a leader, I think in this business, as somebody that's been doing it from t since 2005, I can give you advice that would be applicable in any MSA you're in. And if I do that and I help you, you know, I've done something good. I've done a good deed. I've paid it forward because quite frankly, people have done that for me and I ha absolutely have no problem helping someone. Now, what helps me is if you say good things about me in LinkedIn or Twitter, because that not only gives me an opportunity to help more people, Eddie, but it gives me the ability to know people like you to get the message out. And again, just become a bigger help and a greater help for people that subscribe to magazines or look at these podcasts. And that's my goal, it's to help people. I know where I'm going financially. I have the secret sauce. I'm not writing any books. I'm not doing any tapes or seminars. This is what I wanna do for the rest of my career. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for, for joining us today. I really appreciate your, your time and I appreciate you coming on. It was a pleasure. And again, I would encourage anybody to reach out. I'm always happy to work with people and give them advice if they have questions. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching Think Realty today. Uh, you can follow along, Bruce, and I would encourage you to follow him. Uh, he has been uh, all over the country in different media um, outlets. I know just this past week he was on Bloomberg and Barron's. Um, and you can follow along. I follow along uh, on his LinkedIn page. He's very active there, and I would encourage you to do so as well. If you're considering this asset class, this build to rent asset class, there's no one better to learn from than someone that's been doing it since 2005. I would encourage you to follow him. Thank you so much, Bruce, for being a part. Um, and let me say a quick thank you again to our uh, podcast sponsor. This segment's brought to you by Real Property Management, which is the largest residential property management franchise in North America, managing tens of thousands properties for individuals, investors, and institutions throughout the country. You can learn more at realpropertymanagement.com. That's realpropertymanagement.com. Or go to, their, uh, to the phone at 888-806-7088. That's 888-806-7088. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, it's always our privilege to host the podcast for you each and every week. Uh, I hope that you'll connect with Think Realty. Uh, on all of our social media channels. Wherever you are, we are. Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, just about every social media platform out there. Make sure you go to our website and uh, read our, our latest digital copy of Think Realty Magazine. Subscribe to get it to your house or go to your local Barnes & Noble and pick it up on the shelves. Thank you so much for watching. Happy investing. Have a great day.